The first step is to figure out what your budget's gonna be. And after that, you can start looking for a piece of land in your price range. I would definitely recommend taking some drone shots and measuring the land. Once you have your drone shots, I would place a grid over it and start drawing out your ideas. When you know that piece of land is gonna work for your ideas, I'd begin negotiating a price with the landowner. Once you've come to a verbal agreement, you can go to a notary and sign a deal between you and the landowner. And then after that, you're gonna draw or hire an architect to draw all the technical drawings and submit your plans for the IMB build permit. At this point, you can also start the process to apply for your Pondok Wasata, which is the rental license. Just remember that as a foreigner, you'll need to apply through a PMA or a company. I'm gonna list some of the documents that are required for a Pondok Wasata, but your legal team should also be able to help you with this. After all your paperwork is done, this is the point where you should be hiring the team and starting the build. The first step is to mark out the buildings, and I would definitely double check the diagonals to make sure the measurements are correct. If your land is not completely flat, you might have to bring in some extra film material. After that, you get to start digging the foundations and laying the pipes for plumbing. This is also a good time to dig your septic pit and drill your well. At this point, the workers will start tying the rebar together to create a metal skeleton for your reinforced cement. They'll create these for your footings, your foundations, your posts, and for your beams. Once the metal skeleton is complete, you're gonna start pouring your foundations. One note is that in Indonesia, they don't always reinforce the floors. That is definitely something you can ask for, but you might have to pay extra. Make sure that they have reinforced cement beams underneath any weight bearing or brick walls. It'll take about two weeks for the cement to dry, and during that time you can have your metal team working on the metal posts and the beams and the attachments. As soon as it's dry, they're gonna create the frame for the house. They're gonna lay the bricks in between the frame of the house, and at this point, if you want them hidden, you're gonna wire in all of your electric cables. After that, you're gonna put in your doors and window frames, and you're gonna start plastering the walls. As the walls are getting plastered, if you have enough people, you can start working on your roof and your ceiling. There are a lot of different ways to do a roof and a ceiling, so I'm gonna talk about some of those methods and give you my preferred method in the section after this. While the roof and ceiling are being completed, you can do the finished coats on the walls and the floor. So after this, you should have a finished box. You can add in the toilets, the light fixtures, the light switches, appliances, and the air conditioners. It's also a good time to finish any walkways, landscaping, and driveways. After all that's done, the last step is to furnish it. And then after that, you can live in it, rent it, or sell it, and then hopefully repeat the process and do it again.